Well, hello, church. It's great to have you here with us today. My name is Sean, one of the pastors again here on um, this team. And want to say happy Father's Day to all of our dads out there. We, just, we love you. We honor you on this day. And um, I hope that you are spoiled today in all the things that are going on around you. Now, I have a question for all of us to start today, and it is this. What is the best all-time cartoon that you can think of? So go ahead, in your spaces, in the chat room, you could just begin to answer, what is the best all-time cartoon? Now, I know as the answers are going to start to roll here, we're going to see a lot of different variety, which is great. But uh, I actually wrote a, a few down that I was thinking about. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants maybe could be one of them. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? We've got Paw Patrol. We've got Peppa Pig. We've got this big purple dinosaur called Barney, uh, Dora the Explorer, so many different types of cartoons that are in contention today. But I'm going to go back into the vault to actually pull out a cartoon that is, is quite interesting. It, in fact, it debuted in 1942. Now, I wasn't alive at that point, but because of different replays, years later, I was able to watch this cartoon, and the cartoon was called Mighty Mouse. So from 1942 to 1967, there was this epic cartoon that was happening. And then they rebooted it in 79, 80, and 87 to 89. Th this was the idea of, of Mighty Mouse. The cats of the city have imposed a reign of terror on the rodent community. There happens to be this one mouse that escapes from these felines and what happens is he jumps into a store and somehow some way jumps into this this brick of cheese and what happens there begins to bring the cartoon of mighty mouse out from this piece of cheese emerges a two-footed humanized mouse who have muscles to die for a built chest and superman-esque in everything that he does and the beauty of Mighty Mouse is that he destroys all of the cats. Can I get an amen from anybody on that one? Anyway, th th this idea of Mighty Mouse was really intriguing. In fact, one of the authors of Mighty Mouse said this, is that, that this little mouse had a religious aspect to it. What they were communicating is that humans have often made this statement that there is nothing more that we can do it's now in God's hands, meaning that man's extremities is God's opportunity. So Mighty Mouse was built, actually, to be a Christ-like figure in a cartoon, but it was to all mouse kind. Totally neat uh, cartoon that I was able to see. But Mighty Mouse. Now, the, the reality today is that all of us really love a good story where the mighty prevail. It's why we like the Mighty Ducks. It's why we like William Wallace and Braveheart. It's why we cheer for Ricky Bobby and Talladega Nights, right? We love it when the mighty prevail. And today I want us to, on this Father's Day, come under that theme of mighty. And in fact, doing it in the way of looking at mighty men. So we're going to look at the Word of God together over the next few moments. I'm going to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8. So if you have your Bibles, you can read along there. If not, it will be on the screens for you to follow along with me. And please forgive me as I try to pronounce perhaps some of these names. But I'm actually looking at a text that was titled David's Mighty Men. And this is what it reads in verse 8. These are the names of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashel Beam, the Hakmonite who was leader of the three, the three mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used a spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in the rank, the three, was Eliezer, son of Dodai, the descendant of Ahoah. Once Eliezer and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israel army had fled. He killed Philistines until his hand was too tired to lift a sword. And the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. Good, good job, guys. Next in rank was Shammah, son of Aji from Harar. One time the Philistines gathered at Lehi and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. 
and again the Israelite army fled. But Shammah held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory to him. Then in verse 20, I want to highlight one more of these mighty men. His name was Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warder from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time on a snowy day, he chased a lion into a pit and he killed it. And once armed with only a club, he killed a great Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the 30, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. As we've read the word of the Lord together, let's pray. And then we'll continue. Father, thank you so much for this day in which we get to honor the dads in the space today. We give you thanks for our dads. We understand that there are a lot of stories around our dads, whether good or bad. But one thing that we see in your word is to honor our fathers. So today we're going to honor our fathers in, this, in the time that we have together. I pray that as we have read the word of the Lord, that there would be things that begin to speak to us from your word. So Spirit, I ask that you would come as only you can and you would begin to communicate to all of us today. Help us to bring honor where it is due. Help us to love our dads. And we pray that you will teach us all again because your word is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword and it speaks to us today. So we invite you right now, Holy Spirit, to speak. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Today, I would like to speak to us from the subject, mighty men. The definition of mighty is this, having characterized by or showing superior strength or power. It means to be of great size. In fact, just moments ago, I asked if I could bring Pastor Tyson and Pastor James onto the stage to illustrate the great size of these amazing men. It also goes on to say this in the definition, huge, great in amount, extent, degree, or importance, exceptional. And I would dare to say that on Father's Day, we have some men who are listening right now who can be defined by these things. In fact, a, a, an author has said this about fathers and dads, and it could be a little bit controversial depending on the angle you take. But I wanted to give it to us today, and Wade Boggs communicated this. Anyone can be a father, but it takes someone special to be a dad. Now again, I, we probably have different positions and viewpoints on that statement. But as Wade went on to explain his position, this is what he said. He said, a father can, any father can donate sperm. It's a one-time moment. But he said that a dad has an everyday presence. So that became his definition of it. Someone who was going to provide the roof over the head. Someone who would put clothes on the backs of their kids. Food on the table. And they would love their children. So on, on Mother's Day, we, we, we carried a posture that is no different than today. To say this, I want to communicate that I understand that this day may be a difficult day for many people who are listening. I understand that you may not have a dad, or perhaps you had a bad father, or maybe you're unable to even have children. So we understand that this kind of has a heaviness to it. I'll be honest with you, I am not really looking forward to communicating this message or on the day in which it's delivered, because Father's Day this year has a completely different feel for us in the Chapman House. We lost Lisa's dad in February of this year, and I'm telling you right now, like, this is a very painful day for us to have to navigate through for the first time. And so we, when I say these words, we understand, like, this, this is not easy for everybody. And I also believe that for any male who is present and listening to us at this moment, I believe that you are able as well to be a spiritual dad. You don't have to have a biological connection to a child in order to pour into them. 
And I love this is that we have the opportunity to have spiritual dads and spiritual mentors because we have to teach our children. I am still a child to my parents, but I have had men in my life who have modeled and mentored for me, who have spoken into my life, and they weren't a biological parent. And so I love the, the playing field as we look at David's mighty men today is that you don't even have to be a dad, but we're going to talk and navigate the story around men in general as well. But in my life, I have been blessed with amazing dads. It actually is very special that as I communicate this right now, my dad is en route. And actually, I will be sitting probably beside him as we're all watching this together. And I would do that to say this. Dad, I love you. I honor you. You're one of my heroes. Thank you for investing in me. I love you a lot. And I've had that with Lisa's dad as well, plus many others, to, to, to say all this. Today, let's honor our dads. So here's a question that I would love for all of us to answer wherever we are at today or in the chat room is this. What is your favorite thing about your dad? So go ahead and take a moment to answer that question. Now, the text that we had read this morning uh, communicates to us that David actually had uh, 30 of these mighty warriors around him. But I kind of illustrated his top three. So we want to take a look at his top three men today. And I added a fourth one in because there was something really particular about Benaiah that I wanted us to listen to today. I see some parallels in this story, and I want to communicate it to the men that are listening to us today, to the dads that are out there. I want to challenge us all today that we too can be mighty men as David illustrated these mighty men in his life. Now the first gentleman that we want to look at today was the, was the guy and his name was Joshua Beam. Joshua Beam had a definition to his name and it was this, to whom the people turn. He was the leader of the three and it shows us in this story that he went on to kill eight hundred enemy warriors in one single battle. In First Chronicles chapter 11, we get another story about Joshua Beam where he kills 300 other people in another battle. Imagine being in a single battle one day and having killed 800 enemies. I got to see this about Joshua Beam. This guy was durable. He was in it for the long haul. And talk about parenting or mentoring. I mean, the long haul is a complete understatement when we talk about the investment in other people. I, I don't know if you could do this with me, but go back to the playground when you were growing up. Whether you would be on the field running or you would be on the monkey bars trying to get us across those things as fast as you possibly could. The, the neat part was you set a certain time and then there was that kid who came after you and he broke your time. And all of the sudden, that kid started to trash talk you a little bit, kind of showing that he or she was better. And then you started to get a little bit riled up, and you then spit out these words upon them communicating to you that they are faster than you. You would say this, well, at least my dad is faster than your dad. And then mayhem would break out. 
and the story would go on, whether it would be your dad is faster, your dad is smarter, richer, better, or stronger than yours, we suddenly see with Joshua Beam, there ain't no dad that's stronger than Joshua Beam. The dude killed 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. But this is what I see in Joshua Beam. Joshua Beam had recognized leadership in him. There was something about this guy that David saw, and this is exactly what is called for in being a dad or being a mentor, that you have a leadership capacity about you that is going to allow you to teach and to train other people. Sure, we may declare today that we don't know what we're doing, and let me be honest with you, I've got a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old in my home, and I still don't know what I'm doing with some of the moments that are instructed to me. Like, I, we are learning this all together, but there are things that we don't know. But God has placed you in that situation for a reason. There's a purpose, and it's to lead your kids, or it's to lead other kids because God has gifted all of us today with skills and recognition and resiliency. Let's, let's be honest here, is that parenting is not easy. I don't ever think that it was intended to even be that. But let me ask you men who are listening to us today, will you be durable like Joshua Beam? Will you stay on the battlefield? And will you be, endur or will you be durable as he was? Uh, the thing about Joshua Beam is he overcame unbelievable odds in the battle and let me declare to all of us today that God is still able to overcome your odds as well no matter what you are facing whether it would be a rebellious child or a child who is you know working hard at some skill or talent or a child that has wandered from the Lord I'm telling you today that God is still able to overcome your odds and Joshua Beam leaned into that he wanted to listen to that Joshua Beam was aware of the enemy and dads, let me ask you this question. Are you ready to go to war? Are you ready to go to war against an enemy who is fighting against your children? Will you look at them, especially as they stand in culture with media or music, and will you contend for your children? And I don't want us to forget the meaning of his name. The meaning of his name was to whom the people turn. There was something about Joshua Beam in which people wanted to turn to him. He had a leadership about him that people came to. And asked this question, are your kids able to turn to you? If so, why is that? And if not, perhaps there is something that you'll be able to work on as we move forward. But I want us to take these skill sets and these talents of Joshua Beam and challenge us first today. Will you be durable? Because this is going to be a hard road ahead of us. The second individual that I see in this text is Eliezer. Eliezer's name means God helps. We see this about Eliezer is that he stands alone with David to fight the Philistines. I love this. It says that the rest of the entire Israelite army takes off. I don't know why you'd want to be a part of that army because all these guys apparently do is run except these mighty people here. But the rest of the army takes off. But there Eliezer and David stand together and they fight off the attack. And I love this fact that they give to us about him. He fights until he is too, too tired to even lift his sword. He remains true to his king. And as his name has been defined as, God certainly helped him as he stepped into that moment. What I see about Eliezer that is important for us men today is this, is that he had loyalty. He stayed committed. He knew the mandate. He even watched and observed and fought within the odds. But he stayed loyal. Eliezer battled until he had absolutely nothing left in his life. That even in his exhaustion, he still continued in the fight and he had endurance. When I think about Eliezer, I quickly go and I think about my dad. This is why. My dad, again, as I communicated just moments ago, is a hero to me. He showed me what it was like to live a life of resiliency, work ethic, hard worker. And that's exactly what my dad was. Up at ungodly hours of the morning to take his commute to his work where he was a logger. 
it was then when he came home at the end of that day, probably exhausted from everything, and he takes off the worker hat and he takes and he places on his dad hat. And it was at that moment where dad would wrestle with us. We would have these fights. Somebody would cry. Mom would get mad and we'd blame it on dad. And like all of these different pieces, right? And then when he put us to bed, finally he'd put on another hat, a husband hat, and he would then, you know, do life with mom as well. I mean, when I look at this, my dad, he was committed. He was loyal to the process that was there. He was in it to win it. I mean, dads, let me say this. There is no rest for the weary. Perhaps you've heard that statement before. But Eliezer was a trooper, and so are you. And I want to say to all the dads and all the men out there who have been investing in our next generation, in the kids, thank you so much for what you do. Your commitment and your loyalty speaks volumes to me. And remember again Eliezer's name. It means that God helps. So let me make this statement to all of us listening today. No matter what you face today, God can sustain you. God can help you in your moments as well. This is what we know about who he is. And so we can take a trust in that today. But he is there for you as well. God helps. So I'm going to ask another question for your spaces today. And it is this. How has your dad demonstrated loyalty? Go ahead and answer that in your, in your spaces today. Now, Joshua Beam and Eliezer have showed us some pretty cool things. And now we come to the third of the, of the three mighty men. And his name is Shama. His name means obedience is hearing. The story shows us that the Israelite army flees again. And this time in the middle of a lentil field, a bean field, Shama holds his ground by himself. He holds his ground and he beats back the army that is attacking. And it shows us that he was given a great victory from God. Now I know that as you're looking at the screen, I've suddenly brought a different prop into play here today. And I just want to tell you a little about, about this prop that I've had. Because a very long time ago, over 20 years ago I believe, a couple of people who I dearly love and are very valuable to me were leading a bunch of young leaders. And it was at that time where I was handed this exact staff. And for years, I've held this staff as a reminder of the word that these um, individuals spoke into my life. And in fact, you, you probably aren't able to see it on camera, but if I were to show this to you right here, on the staff, these individuals had engraved a name for me, and the name is right here. And the name that they engraved on this staff was the name Shama. And it was interesting to me that as I felt the Lord was steering me to this text today, and I read the word Shammah, my mind went back to the moment where I was handed this staff. What these individuals were doing at that moment is they were communicating life to me, as they were seeing and recognizing things in me, and they were calling that out inside of my life. Shammah. Again, the name means that obedience is hearing. 
When I look at this text, men, I look at who Shama was. This dude was fearless. I mean, he stood in the middle of a battle all by himself. He stood in the face of adversity. But you know, the one thing that I love about Shama is that he knew who was with him. He knew that the, the God of angels' armies was on his side. He knew that in the middle of that battle, there was someone there with him. And so he was able to stand. Men, let me ask you this question today. Do you know who is fighting with you? Do you know who is already on your side? In fact, one of the names that identifies who God is in the Old Testament is the name Jehovah Shammah, saying that the Lord is present. You see, Shammah knew that the Lord was present with them on the field that day. He was able to stand in the middle of that bean field, which when you begin to think of it, this was their means of survival and living. This was what they would eat. And Shammah stands fearless because he knew that there was someone more powerful and more stronger than the army that was trying to attack him at that place. Dads, let me encourage you today. Please do not give up your guard decide to fight do not flee and defend your field defend your children defend your home do not retreat and run away because Jehovah Shama is with you and he is not done with you especially when it comes to you and your children and I declare as it was declared over me but I will declare it over the men of this church you too are Shama. The Lord is present with you. Stand in that victory as you fight for our kids. Amen. And then a very intriguing interval occurs in the story. I didn't read it for you, but as I read the, the top three of the mightiest of men, there's this neat little story that is illustrated to us. It says this, that David is thirsty. And I love what the scriptures say in that moment. He says that he remarks longingly to his mighty men that he's thirsty. That behind the Philistine um, enemy line in the town of Bethlehem, there is this water. And it is amazing to drink. Guess what these three mighty men do? They penetrate the enemy line. They get him the water. They bring it back to David. And David refuses to drink it. David makes this declaration to his three mighty men. He's like, why in the world would I drink this? This water is not more valuable, nor is it more precious than your own blood. I see what you've done for me, and I want to thank you for it. And he doesn't drink the water. Kind of an absurd little, you know, interval here with the story. But nonetheless, there it is. And when I look at this, I'm reminded of this is that these men, before David became king, even before, you know, the, the fame and the prestige was there, the riches and the glory were there, these men had already dedicated their lives to David. And so in this moment now where his kingship is coming to be, these men were already committed at that one point. And, and I say all of that to say this, that these men served their king. And it reminds me for all of us dads listening today and all of us men and anybody else who's listening, but I know we're kind of going specific to our guys today. But it reminds me of this one thought that we are called to serve. In fact, I, I think that that is what a real man is, is that when we serve the people who are around us. Why? Because it's sacrificial. It puts other people before us. And this is what makes a mighty man to me. It is servant. Now, let me um, look at the fourth and the last person, Benaiah. Benaiah, his name means Yahweh builds up. And he's got an unbelievable um, rap sheet of things that he's done. It shows us that he is a valiant warrior. He's killed two champs of Moab. It even shows us that there's this large Egyptian warrior that comes at him with a spear. Does that kind of sound a little bit familiar to any of us today? Maybe perhaps this story that you've heard of, David and Goliath. You see, these guys knew what their leader had already done. And so they stand in some of these spaces and places knowing that their leader has done it. Why not us? And we do it. 
I love it when he says that on a snowy day he goes down and he, he actually kills a lion in a pit. It says that he was as famous as the three. He was more honored than any in the 30, even though he wasn't one of the three. And he was captain of David's bodyguard. This dude was tough. He was tactical and he was well thought out. He stewarded what was given to him and it turned into a lot. And men, again, that is our children. We have been stewarded with little. And yet what God is looking for you and I today is will we teach? Will we invest? Will we do something little with our children so that much fruit and much productivity will come from them? Love that about Benaiah. And as we look at him, this guy, he, he just had swagger. I mean, he was so teachable, it's why he was able to rise to the top of the ranks. And that's a fact that we all have to look at today, is guys, are we teachable? Will you have a teachable spirit and a posture that says, God, help me as I have been stewarded the things that you have given to me. But this is where I'm going to wrap up today. And it is the killing of this lion in a snowy pit. That, um, that grabs my attention. Um, I think it's pretty interesting that you would intentionally choose to go into a pit with a lion on a day. And this is exactly what Benaiah does. This is my link to that story. And it comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. And it, and it reads this. Stay alert. Watch out. For your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Dads, let me ask you the question. Are you willing to go into the pit with the lion today? Will you be willing to do whatever it takes to defend and to fight for our children whether you are a biological dad or not, will you go to the pit today? Because one thing I'm reminded of is that this fight that we truly are in is a spiritual one. And we need our men to rise up. We need our men to get into the pit because there is an enemy who is coming against our children and the generations that follow. And we need to understand that Yahweh will build us at the right time and in the right moment so that our kids can be safe. Will you stand on guard? Will you pray over the kids in our homes, in our churches? Will you read the Word of God over them, to them, for them? Will you be Benaiah? Will you stand on guard? And I'm asking you today to reflect His name, that Yahweh will build you up, that when you do these things, men, gentlemen, dads, when you do these things, God builds you up. And it doesn't matter your age in this story right now. God wants to use you. And I love the mandate that God places on us as men. It is not a superiority piece. It is just a mantle that he asks us to stand up and to lead again. Will you be Benaiah? Will you get into that pit with that lion? And will you confront that lion whose name is Satan, and will you say, God is greater than what you're going through? You see, we look at David's mighty men, and what we're asking for today is our mighty men to stand up and rise. So whether you would be like Jashobim, Eliezer, Shammah, or Benaiah, these traits call us to attention. They ask us to stand. So mighty men, let's go. It's time for us to stand in the middle of that field and fight. Why? Because God will help us. And our kids are at stake. Our generations are at stake. And we are needed. And you have been equipped today with exactly what you need for exactly the right moment to see the success of these generations. But today, dads, we honor you. We celebrate you for who you are what you've done. Thank you for everything that you've breathed into our lives. And to all the males who are listening now in this space, activate yourself into God's army. We need you. 
And together we could be mighty men together. Let me pray for us today. Father, I thank you so much that on this Dad's Day, you're calling out to the men through example and illustration through these other men that we have studied this morning. Would you allow those things to happen in our lives? Would you allow us to be durable? Would you allow us to be loyal? Would you allow us today to be fearless, to serve other people? And would you equip us to go into the pit with that lion, to stand on guard? I pray that you would equip the men of this space right now. Breathe into them in these holy moments, encouraging them that you're not done with them, but you're going to do something powerful through them. So, Spirit of God, I pray that you would rest right now on the men. Rest on them. Speak to them that they are mighty today. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, on Father's Day, um, this moment doesn't get any easier for us as preachers and pastors because no matter what our earthly father's stories have been for us and their impact on us today there is a heavenly father who wants you to know that he loves you so today you may be in our space as well you may be listening through a different form at another time whatever it is and it's intentional God simply wants you to know today that he loves you he's pretty passionate about who you are and and he runs to you and he gave himself for you that's why we know when he sent his son to die for the sins of humankind it was an act of love and today maybe you don't know that love perhaps you um have never contemplated that love i just want you to know that on this father's day no matter what has happened with biological fathers there is someone who loves you And I want you to be able today and for the rest of this week, walk in that confidence. And if you would like to, it's as simple as saying, I want to have that father in my life. Very simple. All you have to do is say, Father, I do recognize you, accept you. You'll notice that you could click on a link in the chat room if you're live with us today. Or you could text um, New Life to 555-888. And we would love to help you in that journey today. So we hope that you will do that on this Father's Day because there is one who will never fail you. He won't disappoint you. And he loves you. So church, we love you. We hope that you have a fantastic day. And dads, thank you again for who you are and what you've done. We love you. And for all the men out there as well, and your mentors, thank you. Because you're just as valuable to me as the biological dads that we do have. Thank you for all of your investment. Let's be mighty men together. Love you. Have a great week.